The installation of a flow sensor can help you prevent water waste in your system by monitoring water use during and after irrigation run cycles. Let's take a look at how to install a Hunter flow meter to ensure your system is operating at maximum efficiency at all times. First, let's discuss the difference between a flow sensor like the Hunter flow click and a flow meter like the Hunter HC flow meter. A flow sensor detects if there is water flowing in the system, and in the case of a flow click, can be calibrated to shut down a system if a higher than expected flow condition occurs. A flow meter measures the actual flow in a system, and when used with a controller like the Hunter HPC, it can provide station level flow monitoring for reaction to high and low flow conditions. The Hunter HC flow meter that we will install in this video works with Hydrowise controllers. Before we get started, here are a few things you'll need. Primer, PVC solvent cement, fittings, Teflon tape or Teflon paste, the meter, shielded cable, waterproof wire splices, a good set of wire strippers, and some regular wire nuts for testing purposes. When deciding where the flow meter should go, it's important to note that the installation requires 10 times the pipe diameter of undisturbed, fitting-free pipe upstream and five times the pipe diameter downstream. For example, with one inch pipe, 10 times the pipe diameter upstream is 10 inches, or 25.4 centimeters. Five times the diameter downstream with one inch pipe is five inches, or 12.7 centimeters. This is done to prevent water turbulence and skewed readings from the meter. Shielded cable is required for flow meters to ensure proper operation. The material that coats the outside of the wire is known as jacketing. It is important to know what type of wire should be used on your installation. Hunter recommends using shielded, multi-strand direct burial wire for our flow meters. You should either look for UF, underground, or direct burial listed on the wire. This means that it is underground feeder. It is recommended that the wire for the flow meter have separation from the 24 volt station wires to prevent electrical impedance that may create inaccurate flow readings in the controller. It is also important to ensure the wire run is free from electrical interference such as pool pumps, water feature pumps, electrical panels, electrical meters, and air conditioning units. First, we need to excavate and clear the area where the flow meter will be installed. The flow meter should be installed as close to the point of connection as possible and must be before the first irrigation control valve or the master valve. Grab the flow meter box and begin removing the contents. Inside the box, you should have a flow meter, two brass unions to make maintenance and winter blowouts easier down the road, and two gaskets to create a watertight seal. Start by assembling the inlet or upstream side of the meter. Note the directional arrow stamped on the side of the meter body, indicating the direction of flow. The gasket should be inserted in between the union and the meter body. Once the gasket is in place, slide the male adapter portion of the union through the union nut and thread the union onto the meter body. It is recommended that you purchase threaded brass couplings for the installation. It is not recommended to thread brass fittings into plastic fittings. Over tightening of the brass fitting can cause the plastic fitting to stress and crack. If it does not break at the time of the installation, it may break due to heating and cooling of the fitting during normal operation. Add Teflon paste or Teflon tape to the brass male threaded union adapter to create a watertight seal. Two or three wraps of Teflon tape should be plenty. Now thread the adapter into the brass coupling that you purchased. Once you get the coupling threaded into the union adapter with hand tight force, use a wrench or locking pliers to give it another half to three quarter turn. Now let's measure out the distance of pipe that we're going to need on the upstream side and the downstream side. 
As we previously mentioned, we need to have a minimum of 10 times the pipe diameter upstream and 5 times the pipe diameter downstream. In this installation, we don't have much extra room, so we will use the minimums. In this example, we are using 1 inch pipe, so we have 10 inches of undisturbed pipe on the upstream side and 5 inches of undisturbed pipe on the downstream side. Apply Teflon tape to the threaded end of the Schedule 80 nipple. Again, 2 to 3 wraps should be plenty. Hand tighten the Schedule 80 nipple into the brass coupling. Then give the Schedule 80 nipple another half to 3 quarter turn with a pair of pliers. Now, we will measure and cut the Schedule 80 nipple to the right distance. It's always a good idea to measure twice and cut once. I have marked on the pipe 10 inches of undisturbed length. Now, we'll cut and deburr the pipe to prepare it for connection to the main line. It is best practice when making any mainline connections to use both PVC primer and a medium to heavy body PVC solvent cement. Prepare the pipe and fittings with PVC primer. Apply a generous amount of PVC solvent cement to the mainline pipe as well as the inside of the fitting. Slide the fitting onto the piece of pipe, pressing firmly and giving it about a quarter of a turn to make sure that the solvent is evenly distributed in the fitting. Hold it firmly while the solvent sets, at least 30 seconds, but it's a good idea to follow the instructions on the back of the container. Wipe away any excess solvent and follow the same process for the second connection. Place the wire that will be used to communicate with the controller next to the flow meter. Now follow all of the same steps on the downstream side of the meter that were described and shown on the upstream side. Now that the meter is installed, we need to wire it into the controller to begin reading flow from the controller. Direct burial wire is usually laid in the trench with the main line. Conduit is an option, or it may be specified on the plans. Because wire will expand and contract with changes in weather, and to help with potential future adjustments, make sure to add expansion loops in the installation. A few feet should be enough. If you're low on wire in a spool, make sure to end the run at the meter location to minimize the number of splices and pull boxes on the site. Splicing wires is the process of combining two wires together. In this section, we're going to show you how to wire the flow meter into the controller. Always use waterproof wire nuts. We recommend a 3M DBOB for these connections. Before making any connections to the wires, you should make sure that the power is off on the controller. The shielded cable that we will be using for this installation is rated for direct burial and has an outer gray jacketing, aluminum polyester foil shielding, two insulated communication wires, one that is red and one that is black plus a non-insulated drain wire. We will connect the white wire from the meter to the red wire in our shielded cable. We will connect the blue wire from the meter to the black wire in our cable. The first thing you need to do is strip the jacket to expose the individual wires within it. Using your wire strippers, cut back the insulation on the communication wire and the flow meter wire. Make sure to strip them back at the same length, about an inch should be good. Next, put the wires together in parallel so that all the exposed wires are touching. Trim the frayed ends of the wires, and then use the wire nut to twist the wires together, making the connection. When using a two-piece connector, check that the signal to the controller is good before applying the waterproofing connector, and be sure to push the wire nut all the way to the bottom of the connector for a secure seal. It is recommended that you apply waterproof connectors to any spare unused wires. With the wire from the flow meter, spliced together with the wire running back to the controller, your connection should be complete. 
Now that the meter is installed, it's time to wire it into the controller. Follow the diagram on your screen according to the model of Hydrowise controller you have. Once you have wired the meter correctly into the controller following the instructions, it's a good idea to test the meter reading at the controller and in the Hydrowise app. Now that the meter is installed and working, it is time to install the valve box. Valve boxes allow for easy access to the meter when doing maintenance or winterizing the system. The first step is to clear out the area around the flow meter and prep the base under the meter and the pipe for drainage. I prefer a method using landscape fabric and crushed gravel as shown in the valve installation video. Another common method includes using brick support and gravel backfill. In summary, a flow sensor detects if there is water flowing in the system and can be calibrated to shut down a system if a higher than expected flow condition occurs. A flow meter measures the actual flow in a system and can provide station level flow monitoring for reaction to high and low flow conditions. Flow meters help you more accurately manage the water applied to the landscape and maximize the efficiency of your system. Now that the meter is installed, wired, and backfilled, your system is ready to irrigate.